little more than a year ago, we talked with Sutherland, Nebraska farmer Rorick Pullman at a field day on his operation in Western Nebraska. Rorick serves as the board chair for the Nebraska Water Balance Alliance and has been active in promoting the use of water efficiency tools. At last week's Water and Crops Field Day held at the West Central Research and Extension Center in North Platte, we spoke with Rorick again to discuss the potential benefits of using those instruments. We began by asking about the growing season in his area of the state. Uh, what hasn't been hailed is good. Uh, is it as good as last year? I don't think so. Uh, just because, you know, too wet, too dry, precip events, irrigation events, just trying to match those all up. Uh, uh, it's been a challenge, but I, I, it's going to be a good crop. At this time of year, tell me how you can find benefit from using water efficiency tools. You know, a lot of the differences in, in what uh, cropping is here, in particular in western Nebraska, is, is we can irrigate and our climate allows us to grow a lot of different crops with a, with a great amount of quality. And so by doing that, it's allowed us to operate in a way that, that is, at, at one point was unencumbered, and now with regulatory challenges, with the, the consumer asking, you know, what kind of water and, and where is that ending up in our food chain? Those have driven a lot of the ways that we've changed how we do things on our farm. So uh, it's all started historically with soil tests and, and what were we doing with those? And then uh, water holding capacity and, and it just kept, it, 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 that, that, that framework kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we had to ask ourselves, what kind of, how do we build a dashboard or a decision-making process that helps us be better stewards of the water and the resources that we have at hand? And so that has allowed us to put in soil moisture probes, that has allowed us to put in-field weather stations, that, you know, reference ET and, and measure precip at the field level instead of a single gauge at your farm and, and, and you assume that you had the same amount of rain a half mile away. That's not the case. But you're able to collect that data and make good decisions and, and it's improving every day. So for, for farmers that are still on the fence about using these kind of tools, can you walk me through a growing season and tell me what benefit you get from these in deciding how to use water throughout the year? Well, a, a good example is your first irrigation. Is historically, we would, we would water a couple times, you know, get that seed in the ground and, and gosh, we gotta water. Then we'd have to, then we'd, have to, oh man, and we need to kind of keep that damp. Well, we've backed our irrigations clear up into July. So historically, we probably would have put on an inch or two in that late May time frame all the way through June. And unless it's just bone dry and in a drought, uh, we don't have to do that. And understanding crop characteristics, um, the genetics, the, the, the tools that they're handing us from that industry is also giving us better information about how a particular hybrid or a variety or a, a crop responds to irrigation. So once we got to that point and then making in-season decisions, that was the next challenge. So uh, we used to only be able to get ET 30 miles away in Dickens, Nebraska and it wasn't close enough. We needed to know field level ET. Well, we did it with a simple piece of PVC developed out of, out of Colorado that, that gave us a close idea how much actual water at the field level. We used that and then, uh, okay, so we're pumping a half an inch off of you know, estimations of, of gallons per minute and delivery and all that and evaporation. And now that technology is telling us in real time with water meters, with with uh, pivot delivery systems, with, uh, with all of that, those components that, that really tell us how much water we're putting out there. So then, okay, soil types. We've always, you know, we, we understood what they were, but did I know that there was 11 different kinds? And then throw in slope and elevation in the mix. And so you had runoff factors and all these things. And now you can map all of that. You can have satellite imagery, you can fly drones over, you can have low level aerial flights that validate those decisions. And I think that uncertainty with putting that technology in play and, and those decisions that a farmer was making or a producer at that level, they're going, oh, whoa, you know, they went out there finally at harvest and man, I, I burn up a section of the field. Well, how come I didn't know that? Well, now we can know that. We, there, there are ways to, to ground truth those decisions that technology is telling us that are the right thing to do. 
Let's talk about water quality. Before we started, we were talking about some of the issues to the east in Iowa, and, and tell me what emphasis you feel like Nebraska and Nebraska farmers are placing on water quality and ensuring that it's there for years in the future. Well, you know, we're the number one irrigated state in the nation. And so I think with that comes an expectation of, of what are you doing about it and, and how are you managing, uh, you know, the conservation and stewardship of that resource. And, and so the awareness of, of um, water quality. So, you know, they've always measured for nitrates. They've always looked at, you know, uh, livestock, you know, how, how do we all contribute municipal waste and, and uh, sewer water separation, all those things. So we're all, we're all part of a huge system that, that we got to a finger pointing stage and now we're all going, hey, you know, we can do this together. So can we, can we put waste out on your field and, and then use that and, and can you get a benefit from that? And so all of those conversations now happen in a lot of different places. So you look more at it as a, as a systems approach. And so that, that awareness as well has been very positive and in, in, in a beneficial way to the state.